in the 18th century, James Stuart fought desperately for a stolen birthright, the throne of England. This is a story of an Irishman who served that cause. Charles Wogan of Rathcoffey, who could deal with the enemy with a velvet glove or with an iron gauntlet. You've lost your hat, Captain Charlie. Found a point we can attack. Regiment, to horse! What regiment? We're all that's left. The fewer the men, the smaller the target. You'd better pay me the five shillings you owe me, Patrick. Right after this charge, Timothy, when you'll be having no more need of it. <laughs> all right, now. We'll charge the enemy flank. They'll have the sun in their eyes when they fire at us. Let's go! Charge after the next volley before they've time to reload. Forward! <laughs> Enemy to the rear! for the ride, Captain Charlie. But you brought me in the wrong direction. There's still a battle to be won. But never will be by the likes of you, lad. Count the days in the last seven years I've taught you how to sit a horse. Count the hours I've spent on your saber lessons. Count the times I've told you not to risk that neck of yours in foolishness. Well, am I to sit in camp, Charles, and twiddle my thumbs? Am I any less of a fighting man than you or anyone else in the army? It seems I cannot even call my neck my own. You cannot. What's more is dirty. Go and wash it and spend the time till I return and practice in proper use of weapons. Thanks to you and your disobedience, I've got my regiment to find. You and Patrick wait here. There's someone I must see. I'll lay the five shillings my friend Patrick owes me. Someone is a wench. <laughs> a wench? There's one dearer to my heart than any wench, and should be to yours, too. Where are your eyes? Can you not see the royal pendant of His Majesty Prince James of the House of Stuart? The rightful King James III of England. <laughs> Sire. Wogan of Rathcoffey, I'm advised by my officers that we have lost another battle. But not the war, sire. No, we have not lost the war, I hope. But it is true that we lack the men to win it now. Also the arms and the gold furnish us with both. My lords, I have decided that we must live to fight another day. Stay, Charles. I leave for Paris when morning comes. There's Gaydon and O'Toole. But they'd much prefer to escort you into London, Jamie, behind their trusted blades. A dead pretender makes a poor king, Charlie. Gaydon and O'Toole will see to which you live. And not you? No, sire. The wine is good in Paris, Charles. And the ladies even better. There's much we two could do there. Much more we can do here. If you go and your cause will die. I shall stay behind and organize the loyal elements among the British people. I can think of better ways of losing a good friend. Would you rather lose a throne? 
Name an agent that you trust in London. Seek out a man named Addison. A pastry seller at the Tavern of the Waves. He... No. It's wrong of me to let you go. Why, Jamie, will you not trust me? You're so confounded hot-tempered. Why, asking you to hold your tongue is like bridling an unbroken horse. Why, St. Patrick and all the kings of Ireland, I'll do a job of holding in my temper such as no man has ever seen. I'll be the soul of uttermost discretion. Will you not wish me good luck? With all my heart, Charles. But discretion? Well, we shall soon see whether discretion really is the better part of that. seen you here before, sir. The loss was mine. A polite one, too, he is. Could it be your man has come from Ireland? And all the rest of me came from there. Tell me now, do you know anything of a pastry seller called Addison? That one was arrested here and jailed for treason. Take a word of free advice. There's more trouble that walks in here than fleas on a dog's back. Unless you fancy it, drink your pint somewhere else. An ale, Your Grace? Save your watery brews to drink the health of German George. Rather bring us a hot grog, mistress, to toast the devil. If it please, Your Grace, read that. Be warned. All found guilty of speaking against the Crown, and all who sanction such are hereby subject to arrest under the charge of treason and punishable by imprisonment or death. At the pleasure of His Royal Majesty, George Rex. A fair enough target for any citizen, that is. Better if it were the backside of the self-same George of Hanover. Duke don't hold his tricky tongue, he loses his handsome head. Did you say Duke, friend? The Duke of Summerfield. He comes here sometimes with them as holds the pretender. <laughs> and the fool's enough to say so. Yes, yes, the pretender. A name for a king when he ain't sitting on his throne, even though he is more entitled to it than him what is. To the fat hog George of Hanover. May his years be shorter than his breath. What's happened to your first friends? Does fear choke you? Speak up. George doesn't understand the good king's English. And you of stouter hearts, who'll drink with me to an Englishman to put an English throne? Here's to King James III of the House of Stuart. Discretion, Charles, discretion. Your Grace is under arrest. On what charge, pray? Treason against the Crown. You ought to know, Lieutenant. You cannot arrest a man until you take him. Your Grace, I'll get you out of this. Who the devil? Oh, my friend. Charles Warden of Rath Coffee.
surrender your sword in the name of the king. Your George seems to have too many good arguments. My steel appears to be less stubborn than my opinions. The poor Duke of Summerfield is wounded. And he will die pretty soon. <laughs> Rare job of bandaging, Master Physician. You'd almost make me believe I were wounded. The wounds are very grave, nicht? <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. I shall probably have to die of them. But most men who die for King George do not have it so comfortable, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> My soldiers return from Scotland, and James, he again escapes to France. Always he escapes to fight again. Schweinehund. Not for much longer, Your Majesty. You have friends who will see to that. Ja, Herr Duke. A good friend. A valued friend. Yourself. I will not forget, my friends. I imagine my chief value lies in the fact that all the world thinks me loyal to the Stuarts, conspiring against you. <laughs> What will they all say when I appoint you to the richest post in my kingdom? Yes. But this you have to earn, Herr Duke. I think I've made a start in that direction, Your Majesty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a good start you have made. You have a very sharp nose to smell traitors. We catch all of them. Ne? In time. Addison was one, and tonight I caught another rat in the same hole. Your Majesty has heard of Charles Wogan of Rathcoffey? Hmm? By trade, a soldier. By inclination, a conspirator. By reputation, one of the most ardent and loyal supporters of the Stuarts. Quite a swordsman, too. And you let this one live? Only until we've had our use of him. Oh. I want to know all he has in his mind. The Duchess of Summerfield. Show her in. And no key is better to unlock a stubborn mind than a beautiful woman. Your Majesty. Sie sind das schöne Fräulein Brett. If it pleases Your Majesty, I shall speak German. But since my arrival from Hanover, I've spoken nothing but English. So. Good. Good. And uh, have you met Fräulein Brett, your wife? For the occasion, yes. Pity it's only a masquerade. As a real husband, you'd be much too difficult to manage. But you do not already find him so? If it was me, you would. I but serve Your Majesty's cause in the way I've been asked to serve it. She serves her king against the pretender, which is all that we can ask of her just now. You might tell His Majesty about your mission, Anne. I understand the pretender is seeking a bride among the royal families of Europe. He hopes for an heir to carry on the Stuart line. Needless to say that such a marriage must never take place. And it seems to me the best way of assuring this would be for James to die before he had chance to marry. Yeah, good, good. But uh, is this lovely lady to be sent as our assassin? Certainly not. I wouldn't think of asking such a task of her. Besides, an obvious assassination might force us into war. And war is cost money, I know too well. But as my wife, James will welcome you. And my house in Paris is there for you to stay in. Also, you may be of great help to our friend, the Comte de Lussac. Our friend? Can't you say? Who is he? We think he's our friend. At least he takes our money. If he is, James should not have long to live. De Lussac sits at his right hand. If he is not, you should find it out. I know what is expected of me. I shall start at once. Not quite. First, you must wait for your traveling companion, a man as close to the Stuart cause as James himself, a most hot-headed Irishman. It might work to your advantage to make him fall in love with you a little. Your Grace will spare my blushes. No man falls in love with me a little. Perhaps you're right. Uh, might I suggest, for the sake of appearances, you move into my London lodgings, meanwhile, to be near your most devoted husband? Of course. But uh, begging your Grace's pardon, how near? Not very near, unfortunately, since officially, I shall be dead. It is good to send an agent to watch another agent. But who is to watch 
Who? Huh? No one is needed in her case. Her father was condemned by James and died upon the scaffold. Now, Your Majesty, if you'd be good enough to have me thrown into the dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. The dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourselves the trouble of executions here. Between the rats and the dampness, there can't be much work left for the headsman's axe. Leastwise, you rot in noble company with a traitor of a duke beside you. Arthur Summerfield. It's Wogan. Is your grace so ill? Not ill, Wogan. Dying. There's no time. I have things to tell you. Hear me well. Nothing's more important than your life, sir. Let me send a jailer for a physician. It's no use. I beg of you, hear me while I still have breath. Would you help the steward cause, Wogan? I am scarce in a position to help anyone at this moment, Your Grace. Uh, you must try. My coat in the lining. Tear it. Quickly, man. Gold, Wogan. Enough to bribe your way out of Hades. Take it and... <laughs> yes, yes, the gold. You wanted me to... Escape by any means you can. My wife, take her to France. Put her under the care of James. There she'll be safe. <laughs> safe. Guards! Quick! Duke of Summerfield is dying. Good riddance to all traitors. At least have the decency to send for a surgeon, you swine. A surgeon can't put life back in him. What have you got there? Music, my friend. The sweetest song in the world, gold sovereigns clinking together. Come in, help yourself. Come back up. Will you? Can't you vultures find enough bones to pick in your own nest? Instead of disturbing the sleep of honest sentries. the stars up above and swear to you my eternal love. Why do you stop singing, Captain Wogan? I woke your grace from sleep. It was time I stopped. I was awake. Every time I closed my eyes, it seemed to me I saw... You must try not to think of him. The Duke would not want you to be grieving so. You're most understanding, Charles Wogan. It is most pleasant to hear a woman speak my name so, my lady. You've heard of it before. Oh, yes. All of us have heard it. All who love King James. King James. I long to hear that name spoken in London. Not in whispers, but in shouts, proudly. King James. 
And that we will before too long, when he's where he should be on the throne of England. How can it be that some who call themselves loyal Englishmen think of the Stuarts to be cruel and haughty? In England, we're rid of them. Because they're fools. Because they don't know James as I've known him. And I? How have you known him? As a man who taught him how to fight. As a soldier who fought with him, as a brother almost. I laid down my life for him. Yes. You would lay down your life. My lady feels the cold? No, oh, it's nothing. But you. You're wet through. A soldier soon gets used to having a wet skin and a dry throat. And to danger also? I trade no danger is true danger till it's fatal. And so the brave too often die. Too young. I could learn much about courage from my lady. So composed after her great loss. <laughs> Let me be honest, Captain. My marriage was political convenience. Love didn't enter at all. Then the Duke was blind. Husbands of an hour. Were you never married? I choose to do my fighting on the battlefield. Even that might be a safer place for you than Paris. What place is safe? Between the cradle and the grave. None. The more reason for you to be careful, Charles Wogan. More careful with your eyes, my lady, or you'll tip the boat. Please, keep the hand on the tiller. The waters of the channel are so deep and cold. I have no wish to drown in them, but rather in the wines of France with you. My lords and ladies, good health to King Louis of France, who has given us the gracious hospitality of his palace in our time of exile. It's good to have you by my side again, Charlie. From this moment on, I charge myself with your protection, Jamie. And in the absence of His Majesty King Louis, good health to Count de Lussac, who represents the friendship of France to our cause. You also have the pleasure of knowing our lovely guest of honor, the Duchess of Summerfield. So short a time a bride, so soon a widow of our faithful friend who died in defense of our cause. And now, my loyal friends, as the French would say, bon appétit. It's no use, Charlie. I have no appetite. It is true I lack discretion. But I cannot help noticing your heart is troubled. A king without a country. We must marry for alliances and armies, and a male heir rather than for his convictions. Have you not heard I must wed the Princess of Saxony? What are the feelings that Princess Clementina holds for you? Surely they've not changed. Her parents do not think well of her betrothal to a pretender. I must say I cannot blame them. May I ask then, is she of the same opinion? I think too well of Clementina to put the question to her. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. How can I keep my mind on dinner feeling your eyes on the back of my neck? How can I keep my mind on guarding the prince with your lovely neck so near my eyes? Sorry you did that, sir. We could have taken him alive. Capitan, why would you wish to spare the life of a man who tried to kill your king? Your pardon, Count. We might have questioned him. Each pistol answered your questions, Capitan. See to his removal. This terrible event must have upset you, Duchesse. May I suggest a bit of air? Thank you. 
clumsy attempt could hardly be called outstanding. For a spy, Duchesse, your tone could hardly be called respectful. Please remember, I am in charge here. Then I'll hold you responsible in my report to London. That idiot Capitaine, if he had not interfered... I did my best to distract him. But your man was really very clumsy. You should hire more experienced assassins, Count. Oh? Perhaps you will help me select them? Till later, my lady. It is lucky I am finding you alone, Anne. How well do you know De Luzac? Not as well as he'd like. Must be this air of France. It's too sharp for a simple soldier. Makes him wonder if he's right in trusting anyone. Do you not trust me, Charles? I'll trust you with my heart and soul if you'll let me. What do you say to that? Please trust me. Always. Atul, when you're relieved of guard, find a courier, a trusted one, to take this letter I've written swiftly into Poland. Now, it must reach no hand but the fair one of the Princess Clementina Zobieska. You'll bring an answer back, I hope. I'll do that, sir. Your forgiveness, sire. I was detained. Cavalry and I have been racking our brains to think who could have plotted that attempt on me. So far, I must admit, quite in vain. Shall I make a guess? And that is? De Luzac. Preposterous. Think what you're saying, Charles. This man is an emissary of our host, King Louis. We can't possibly insult our firmest ally. Not without proof, certainly. If I should find it. Impossible. Well, forgive my personal interest in the matter, but if I had proof, I would rid myself of him at once. Well spoken, Jamie. Will Your Majesty allow me to withdraw? Yes, providing that you do not desert me once again. I shall not forget my duty, sire, whoever the temptation might be. It's late for visiting, my lord. In our profession, one is up till all hours. I do not think we ought to be seen together, if you understand. I quite agree. I only came to ask you this. What are you and Captain Wogan to each other? Traveling companions on a channel crossing. No more. Am I to assume your traveling companions usually embrace you with great tenderness? I was told to make him fall in love with me. That you have amply done. Were you also told to fall in love with him? I'm not in love with him. Splendid. Then you can offer no objection if I point out this Irish captain is suspicious of me and therefore a danger. He also must be killed. Yes, kill him. Kill everyone that stands in your way. Oh, don't let it bother you that Wogan by now might have told his master his suspicions. Kill that man and make them absolutely certain. How can I be certain of you, my dear Duchesse? It tires me to think of it. I must go. You will tell the Duke in London that a fatal accident will overtake James and his faithful Wogan at the same time. What will you do to them? You might warn the Capitan, if I told you. I never place reliance on a woman who is tempted. Au revoir, my lady. And pray, do not make me plan a fatal accident for you as well. Did I or did I not receive a letter from you? You did. And did it or did it not say you were leaving Paris forever? Yes, that was what I wrote. And are you or are you not right here before my eyes? 
And it wasn't true. It was a bad dream, and I'd just awakened. Oh, no, Charles. I'm leaving for Italy within an hour. I'd say if you loved me as much as I love you, you'd stay. If you love me, you'd follow me to Italy. And leave the king. And leave the king. Well, which of us do you choose? Oh, so that's the game. To see if I pursue you, a woman's game. Well, this is no time to be playing at hand. The king has need of you and me. Today I sit with him in council, tomorrow hunt with him for boar. Tell me you'll stay. Tell me. Pretty picture, my lady. Surprised at my accomplishment? Surely, when I wrote you and told you I would meet you here, you did not think I would sit with idle hands. Well, say you admire my art. The only art you know is murder. I am a man of many talents. Quickly now, what word from London? None. What did you talk of with the Capitan? Nothing of interest for us. The pretender meets in council today, and tomorrow he hunts for boar. And what of this rumor of your leaving us? Untrue. Now, may I be free to go? Of course. You will take the carcass to the back of the cave. How do you expect a dead boar to kill a pretender, my lord? When James will hunt this afternoon, the dogs will follow the scent of the boar to the cave. James will follow the dogs. This uh, Capitan of his will probably go with James to make the kill. Come. Tragic accident if His Majesty and Captain Wogan were to make a fatal misstep. The hounds have driven that tusker into his lair. Give me a torch. I claim the first killing. The cave gives too much advantage to the boar, Your Majesty. Let me precede you. What, and spoil my sport? Never. It's a double honor to kill a pig with a taste for strategy. Wogan! Wogan! Wogan, the beast's already dead. Take care, sire. That's as deep as a door to Hades. Your Majesty! I feel more like the game than the hunter. They almost were. They're well paid. It's good to know our life isn't purchased cheaply. Come, Captain Charlie, I've had enough of being the hunted at my own hunt. Painting is ready for you now. You have your instructions. See to it there's no delay. Yes, Count Lusak. Oh! Open the gate, watchman. I'm in the greatest haste. There's plenty of time. Got your papers, card of identity, visa of exit. All here. Now be quick, will you? Stop, Pete! Hold it, man, watchman! 
He's wanted for theft. A theft? You mean this one? Well, judge for yourself. He just stole a priceless painting from Dr. Gasper, the English art collector. Why? It's a lie. My papers are in order. Forged under the name of a Count de Lusac, I'd wager. But the Count said... Ah, Dr. Gasper himself will be the best judge of whether this painting be forged or not. Give me that painting. This is an outrage. Ah, but very valuable. Now, you just hold on to your horses for a while, young fellow. Stay here with the watchman. Dr. Gasper's coach is just arriving. But I am in the greatest haste. Oh, what thief is it? Don't you understand? I'm not a thief. Oh, we'll find out later. There's plenty of time. Is the good Dr. Casper inside the carriage, Mr. Gaydon? Aye, that he is, Mr. O'Toole. Would you mind holding this priceless painting for me? <laughs> is too well protected by the shamrock. The shamrock? That must be us. This all stands for James. Regarding him too well is a touching compliment to us. Ah, praise be. They'll give up on him now. And maybe leave his majesty in peace. Wait, wait, here's more. The Saxon maiden may wed. Princess of Saxony. The Luzak sends word of the king's marriage plan so they can be scotched. Well, a courier of yours never come back from Poland. He's barely had time to get there, sir. It's no wild guess of mine, but this message seems to be for the man who's at the bottom of all the doings. Well spoken. It is my pleasure to meet the man. Why not? We have the perfect bait to hook him. Come at once. Urgent. Let him continue his journey. You can tell him that Dr. Gasper found the thing a worthless botch. And that I'll be doing. <clears throat> A thousand pardons, monsieur. May master has examined the painting and found it quite worthless. You may proceed. Idiots, cows. Now, will you open that blasted gate? The gate? Yes, of course, monsieur. At once. Huh. Your master should be more careful. How can I ever hope to improve when they applaud even my missus? The king can do no wrong, sire. No, but his bow can. <laughs> What? No more arrows? The king is waiting for my arrows, Charles. It's better off he is without them at all. Anne, the weary walk it is from where I live to where you live. It tires you? Enormously. They'll not put up with it another day. Oh, Charles, don't you see? The whole world is between us. If you would only believe me. Then it's a small world, and we'll share it together. We've been searching everywhere for you, Captain Charlie. You might have had the consideration not to find me at just this moment. This news wouldn't keep. The Duke of Summerfield is alive, and even now in France. Oh, my, my husband died in prison. You were with him. Perhaps I'm more of a fool than physician. You're certain? He escaped with the help of one of our own men in London. This is good news for our cause, Captain Charlie. Of course, for James's cause. This helps me understand a lot of things. I was told he died in prison. And you must be very happily surprised and impatient to see your husband. Where is he now? He's awaiting you at home. It was lucky for the Duke to have recovered enough from his wounds to escape from George's prison. Yes. Very. Could be only coincidences arriving so soon after we sent that message under Luzak's painting. It could be more than a coincidence, Captain Charlie. Or anyone else but Summerfield. The man who stormed against George in the London Tavern, then crossed blades with six of George's men. That's impossible. But still in all, Captain, if Summerfield did have dirt in his hands, his wife might have too, eh? Han? Oh, I couldn't believe it. Stand guard here. His Majesty asks for me, say I've gone to have a bit of a talk with a lady. 
Aye, sir. We must see the Duchess. I have orders to admit no one, sir. But we won't turn away the man who saved my life. Wogan, my friend. I'd not expected to see you again in this world. I certainly wasn't expecting to see your grace tonight in France. Probably not. But cats and conspirators must have more than one life, you know. Come in, Wogan. You two know each other, of course. I expected a much warmer meeting, Anne, from two friends who'd braved the English Channel together. Surely that friendship cannot have ended there. I've had little opportunity to see the captain in Paris. That was your last, Wogan. But if she had, it might have been mine. Did you doubt me when I told you she was very beautiful? I could scarcely have doubted the words of a man on his deathbed. Come here, Anne. Sit down. So, de Lussac was right. I don't understand, my lord. You didn't reject the Irishman's kiss, I'm told. You forget I was playing a game with him. By your rules. I wasn't forgetting. But I thought perhaps you'd forgotten that your father died on a steward scaffold. Really, my lord, because I don't welcome your kiss, you, you accuse me of disloyalty to our cause. I saw your eyes when you looked at him. Only a man who loves you as much as I do could see how much you love him. What, no angry denials, no bitter recriminations? My father died for what he believed was right. But many men have died on both sides, believing they were right. And now you think that right is on the side of the Stuarts? I've lived among them now, and I know them. And I find them hard to hate. And easy to love. No, not easy. What good is it to love him? When he knows the truth, he'll hate me. Your usefulness is ended here, Anne, and I'm sorry. Perhaps I should have gone to France myself and personally put an end to James's life. But then a clever conspirator never really knows which side will eventually win. What do you plan to do with me? Only time will tell. And I'll give you all the time in the world, alone, here, with your thoughts. Am I to consider myself your prisoner, then? My dear prisoner. The way lies clear before you, de Luzac. Take it. What? Am I to be deprived of your company so soon? The king ordered me to give you safe conduct out of his province. Were it for me to say, I'd hang you for a spy. The Irish generally run to hot words and cold feet. The Irish bear insults badly, de Luzac. I too. You and this pretender of yours will live to remember what you have done to me. De Luzac! Something you've forgotten, De Luzac. You please dismount. What did I forget, Capitan? My orders. They seem to have ended back there. On this side of the crossroads, I'm on my own. And you can no longer hide behind the protection of my king. What do you want, Wogan? The truth. Who sent you to Saint Germain? Tell me now and save me the trouble of loosening your tongue with my blade. Enough. Defend yourself. As I was saying, the Luzak, the truth. The, the Duke of Summerfield? Summerfield. You took your orders from him. And your accomplice. The Duchess of Summerfield? 
I said the truth, you lying wretch. It is the truth, I swear it. My lord, good health to you in long life. Summerfield, old friend, we thank Providence for restoring you to us. So do I, Your Majesty, if only that I may serve you again. Your recovery is double cause for rejoicing. For now we may share our great news with you. Great news, my liege? Today a courier arrived from Poland unexpectedly. He brought word that the House of Sobieska consents to my marriage to the Princess Clementina. This is cause for rejoicing. Uh, when will she start? Well, even now she journeys to Austria on her way to Paris. And how soon will she arrive? Not soon enough for me. Very lovely, Your Majesty. I leave immediately to meet her halfway in Austria. Well, you frown, my lord. It's not for me to disagree with my king or a man's impatience to join the woman he loves. Still... <laughs> speak your mind, Summerfield. We speak as old friends. Then, since Austria is divided in its sympathies between George of Hanover and Your Majesty, I'd protest the risk to your person when the destinies of England hang in the balance. You would remind me of my inherited responsibilities and ask me to forget my feelings as a man. No, my liege. Only that you send someone in your place whom you can trust to speed the union. And who might this man be? Need you ask or look further? You're right. Choose an honor guard to relieve the Polish guard of the princess. You'll find them at an inn called the Golden Stein in Augsburg. I know the place, and I promise to choose men as loyal to the Stuart cause as I myself. Then it's settled. You'll leave at once. With my wife, to provide gentle companionship for the princess. Summerfield, you think of everything. But is it wise to take her on such a mission? Believe me, sire, I would not make the suggestion if I thought it unwise. Sicily, a jewel in the sea and the brightest stone in the coronet of Austria. The Austrian emperor could lose it without the friendship of King George. I'm sure I can count on Austria's aid in this affair. Did you know I had a talent for diplomacy? The Emperor won't endanger Austria's neutrality just, just to please you. For her own safety, I can arrange for the Austrian guard to detain Princess Clementina. Only until I can arrange for her transfer to a permanent prison in the Tower of London. Yes, you have a talent. I'm sure you'll worm your way to power in this world. And I. Am I to be forced into this adventure too? Forced? No, force is clumsy, and I detest clumsiness. Influence is a better word. Yes, I'm sure I can influence you to accompany me. I find myself distinctly unimpressed. I hope not. For you see, if I cannot persuade you, then I must leave you behind. And I cannot leave you behind alive. On the other hand, I cannot take you with me dead. The choice is entirely yours. You know my choice. I'd regret losing a wife so young with so much to live for. I see nothing much to live for. Then turn around. I have enormous talent for making your life worth living, if allowed to display it. This will not convince me. I'm sorry. I had hoped, Anne, that one day you'd be my wife. How can a man of your talents be so credulous? A word from me would end your traitorous conduct to King George on the headsman's block. But I prefer to think of you in England free to breathe the air and walk the countryside again. With you beside me? Yes, sharing our little secret together. Of course, you'll never see your Irishman again, but that would be better too. For whom? For you, and better than placing him in a position of speeding you to the gallows. Oh, don't feel badly. Few men have understanding to forgive such things. I am one of the few. Yes, the choice is mine. Stuart Gallus, or Hanover Hetzman. I'll go with you. I was so sure you would. I took the liberty of having your belongings packed. Our carriage is waiting in the courtyard.
We're too late, Captain Charlie. The Duke and Duchess of Summerfield are not in residence. They must have gone away together, sir. I had small hope that the Luzak lied about her, but that's gone now. How will I be telling James his good friends have betrayed him? Gaden, drive me to the king. Aye, sir. Summerfield, a traitor. And his wife, tarred with the same pitch. I can't believe it. Every move they made, Your Majesty, was a plot against you. I trusted him. And I trusted her. I've sent two traitors into Austria to get my bride. In their tender care, she'll never leave Austria alive. Then I'll lead my armies into Austria and rescue her by force. We cannot fight Austria and George's England, too. Besides, an army moves slowly. But three men, sire, might move swiftly across the border and back again. Three men? To steal a princess from an empire? By your leave, sire. Three Irishmen. You three? <laughs> by the great Lord Harry, I'm tempted. Wogan, do you think there's a chance on this earth of your succeeding? Three chances, sire. This ring will make you known to the princess. I'll follow you and await you this side of the border. The princess herself will return this ring to you. I swear it. Go now. And all the Stuart hopes go with you. Your destination? Augsburg, where merchants come to buy lace. This is not the usual season to buy lace. You're clever to guess our secret, Captain. Of course, we'll do better arriving before our competitors. We're too late. Summerfield's been here and gone. And the princess? With him. Summerfield's troops relieved the Polish guards two hours ago. They followed the road to Paris. Maybe we can still overtake them. If our wheels touch the ground before we do, Gaydon, I'll have your skin. Aye, sir. again, girl. A party of Englishmen on horseback, a coach carrying one or two women, they must have passed this way. Not today or yesterday, sir. Not a coach, not a party of Englishmen, not even one Englishman. Ah, we've lost them. Could we have taken the wrong direction at all? It's the only stopping place on the Paris roads in Augsburg. Well, I'll swear to it that we haven't passed them. Perhaps the Englishman's gold dazzled your lovely eyes, made you close them. Would you open them again for this? If I tell you what you wish to know, would this gold be mine? All of it. Then you must believe I speak the truth. For if I told you what you want to hear, I'd be lying. Is there any other place between here and Augsburg, an inn, a tavern? No. Even the old Habsburg tavern has been deserted for many years. Though only last night a party of Austrian soldiers was quartered there. Austrians? Yeah. Deserted tavern? Where? Three kilometers. There's a road. Here. Oh, danke schön. Danke schön. Three kilometers. Captain. Are you thinking, lad, such a place might make a convenient prison for a royal princess? Aye. We're with you, Captain Charlie. It's a wild idea. But better than none. Why else should Austrian troops be guarding an abandoned tavern? And if they are and the princess is inside, how will the likes of three of us get past them? Aye, again, an excellent question. One that will need precious time to find the answer for. Woman, your finest ale for an officer of the Empire. I'm near expiring from thirst. What's in your head, Captain Charlie? I'm thinking that uniform is just about my size. I see your point, sir, and it'll be my pleasure to get it for you. Discretion, man. You can't risk violence and a princess is safely in our hands. Bring another. I can drink all you can carry. Yeah. Lieutenant fancies himself a drinking man, O'Toole. Aye, that he does. 
I'll wager you could drink him right out of that uniform. Is that a question you're asking, Captain Charlie? It's an order I'm giving out to. Yes, sir. Since I must fight, at least the weapons are to me liking. <laughs> so it's as perishing with thirst you are, Lieutenant. That is the long, dusty road you must have been traveling this day. But you know a funny thing, Lieutenant? The minute I clapped my eyes on you, I said to myself, oh, tools as I, that's me. Oh, tools as I, there is a man after my own heart. And if your thirst is as big as mine, sir, this should be the start of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> then join me, friend. I'll be delighted. <laughs> Slanta. <clears throat> ah, it is nasty stuff, this ale they're serving here. You'll pardon me for suggesting it, Lieutenant, but a man of your part should be having a drink of whiskey. Irish whiskey. Makusha. Yeah. Would you mind bringing in that wee bit of a bottle I was sampling a few minutes ago? But yeah. I... Uh... Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. It is myself that stand and treat. And wait till you taste it. 140 proof it is, and gentle as the morning mist that falls on the county Tipperary. Ah, there we are. <clears throat> Look at it, sir. The color. It's not too clear. That is Irish peat smoke. And the thicker the smoke, the better the whiskey. Here we go, sir, with a blessing on Ireland's holy monks who preserved the precious recipe from oblivion. And a curse on the man that made such a small glass. Drink. <coughs> What's the matter, sir? It went around the wrong gullet, didn't it? <coughs> but pardon me, Lieutenant. Did you ever in your life <coughs> taste a more powerful drink to kill a man's thirst? Here, have another. Go on. <coughs> Have a good one. There you are. <clears throat> now, Scotch whiskey, as the saying goes, is a bonny brow brew. Perhaps the bonniest brew that was ever brow. Outside of Ireland, that is. But I'm asking you, Rotson, and I'm asking you man to man. I'm asking you to keep an open mind and compare. Skull. Yes, Lieutenant, it has its points, that it has. But there's no denying... Lieutenant, Lieutenant, now where did that gossoon go to? Lieutenant, Lieutenant! Ah, there you are, Lieutenant. <clears throat> the enemy is defeated, sir, and the situation <laughs> is under control. I told you done a fine job. <laughs> Well, as the saying goes, O'Toole seen his duty and he'd done it. <laughs> done himself in at the same time. You'll be all right sleeping this one off. Come on, O'Toole. Is there anything I can do, sir? Well, now, maybe there is. It's a lovely dress you're wearing, my dear. Well, thank you, sir. Now, oh. thank you for your trouble. Thank you. Pauline! Now, that's a lovely dress you're wearing, my dear. Okay. You have another one? Yeah. And put it on. And buy yourself two more. I want this one for my wife. And a cloak and a fan if you have one. But the dress, it is not worth it. It is to me, lass. Now hurry. Yeah, yeah. Now what? Hey, it'll be a snug fit, me lad. But I think you can squeeze into it all right. Now hold on a minute, Captain Charlie. I've done a lot of things in the service of King James, but I'll not be wearing a barmaid's dress. No, sir. Not for any man. This is one time I'll be putting my foot down. Never, never in a million years. Do you hear, Captain? Never. Never. Ah, you're pretty as a picture, Gaden. Peaches and cream on your face and the blush of innocence on your cheeks. A fine friend you are, Captain. It is not the blush of innocence at all. It's the blood rushing to my head from this accursed Carson. Oh, can't you unlace it a notch? My eyes are popping out of my face. Nobody will notice in the dark. Ah, oh, Captain. In you go, my proud beauty. Everything quiet here, Sergeant? Yes, sir. 
You look like a man of experience. Tell me, Sergeant, have you ever been in love? I've never been out of it. I'm Viennese. Ah, then I can trust your discretion. The night is young, the lady is beautiful, and the place is here. Lady, sir? In the coach. Who shall be named, sir? Oh, yeah. A friend of yours, sir? Sergeant, one of my dearest friends. Yeah. Lieutenant, my discretion is at your command. Use the side door of the tavern. You are a lucky man. Sergeant, you've no idea how lucky I am. Yeah. Let the coach pass. Let my orders are that no one... Have has... you no respect for romance? You must be Prussian. Attention. Drinking. Gaming. So, maybe there are ventures in the cellar, too. Oh, no ventures in the cellar, sir. On my honor. Since no one can enter or leave the princess's room, except by the stairway, we thought... You will think no more. You will obey. Colonel von Urban is coming with the staff soon. If he had walked in on a scene like this, Remove cards, dice, yourselves from this room at once, into the cellar, quick. Move! can change in here, sir. It's good. I regret that I must leave, Your Highness, but I go to arrange more permanent quarters. May I wish you a pleasant sleep? England will be as welcome for its clean linen, my dear, as for its dirty weather. Right, yes, my lord, and you won't hear the echo. Don't worry, Wogan. I don't indulge in futile heroics. Keep these two traitors here, Patrick. Charles. Your Highness. This uniform is as hateful to me, Your Highness, as it must be to you. I come from King James. Here is a ring he gave me to give to you. Your name? Captain Charles Wogan, Your Highness. The King has not forgotten. Tell him... Tell him that I have not forgotten. I never shall. Now you must go before you're discovered. Will Your Highness go with me? With you? Where? To the King. We have a disguise for you. I must prepare, Your Highness. The King's enemies will stop at nothing to prevent this marriage. If they overtake us, they might attempt to... Kill me. I'm ready to go with you. Well spoken, Your Highness. The lady looked even more beautiful than before. Oh, yeah. Now, we'll wait here, just the three of us, until they get a fair start. Halt! Identify yourself. Identify myself. Look at my face, you idiot. Uh, Lieutenant, 
Where's your uniform? Gone. Stolen by a band of thieves. Blood and wounds. The Lieutenant. I am the Lieutenant. No, 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 no. I mean the one who was here with the lady who left here. With a lady? Yes, sir. I remember now. He was wearing a white uniform, very much like your own. Imbecile! Come with me! No, but I, I am on guard. On guard? What is there left to guard? You guard. You're a fool, Gaiden. Wogan left you behind to die for him. I think not, my lord. What do you mean? When they reach the border, all Europe will know if you attempt to abduct the Polish princess. Austria cannot admit that she gave you aid for fear of war with Poland. And without Austria, England might soon fall to James Stuart. So if, if you harm his friend... Well said, my lady. But I don't quite understand. Tis yourself that's as deep in this as your husband here. When you see Charles Wogan again, tell him this. I loved him well, and I came to love the cause he fought for. You've said enough. Begging your pardon, Duke, but we'll hear the little lady out. Summerfield was never my husband. Tell him that, please. It's what I should have told him long ago. Take his weapon. Well done, Lieutenant. The lady spoke truth, my foolish friend. No one will ever hear of it, because Wogan will never reach the border. Guard him well. After we get the princess, we'll dispose of him. Away from the border, Cavani. They should have been here by now. Scarcely a mile, Your Majesty. They can't possibly miss us. If they get across the border, we should never have let them try such a scheme. Wogan, Gaden, O'Toole, they're all madmen. Madmen sometimes succeed where no sane man would. And that is our only hope. Monsieur. We lost a wheel and no time to replace it. Do you think you could ride one of the coach horses? I think so. King James is waiting just across the border. You'll have to ride the rest of the way alone, Your Highness. No, take the other horse. I'm staying here till I see you safely across. Do you think it's Summerfield? It must be, by the looks of those Austrian soldiers riding with him. Godspeed, Your Highness. God bless you, sir. Demonstration, my dear, but you'll stay here with me. Field. No. 
Well, they can only hang me once. Your Logan won't live to see it. Stay here. James III, rightful King of Great Britain, in celebration of this first anniversary of our marriage to the Princess Maria Clementina Sobieska and the birth of our son, do hereby proclaim the knighthood of our devoted friend, Charles Wogan of Rathcoffey. Rise, Sir Charles Wogan. And we further proclaim the knighthood of our loyal friends, Timothy O'Toole and Patrick Gaydon. Rise, Sir Timothy O'Toole. Rise, Sir Patrick Gaydon. And now... Ah, tis the voice of Bonnie Prince Charlie I'm hearing, eh, Sir Timothy? And in need of aid and support from the sound of him, Sir Patrick? <laughs> Beg your permission to retire, Your Majesty. Ah, uh, that's no way to handle a baby. <laughs> Sir, Charles Wogan. It's very pleasant to hear a woman speak my name so, my lady. 